Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 10 o'clock worshiping experience where we're doing our best to make disciples by reaching out, loving, caring, sharing, and inspiring spiritual and personal growth. It is so good to see all of you on today and to have all of you with us. And of course, those of you joining us online, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us as well. Let me begin by saying happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Yeah, I know it's on Thursday, but for those of us who know the Lord and love the Lord actually every day. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. And yes, I am very much aware of what's going on in the kitchen. <laughs> I've already been in there. Yes. And, 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 I, and I know that some of you all who love me will love me a lot less if we don't get out of here soon enough. So we will be working <laughs> on this this morning. Please, my friends, remember to, to, to fill out the communication cards in the chair backs in front of you and uh, place those in the collection plate as it comes by during this worshiping experience. Uh, we want to be able to keep up with you, especially this week, if there are any needs that you have that we may be able to help you with. And for those of you joining us online, especially on Facebook, we would encourage you to put something in the comment section to let us know that you're with us on today because we are, again, very glad to have you. As always, continue to check your e-blasts, always read your newsletters and check the calendars and follow us on social media to find out all the things that are happening here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church this week and the weeks to come. So yes, we will be having a Thanksgiving meal after this worshiping experience. And we are asking, for those of you who can help, we would hope that you'll be able to stay a little bit after that to help us clean up there in Shelton Hall. And there is a box simply for donations. The donations are to help offset the cost of the turkeys that we have purchased for today. If you are not able to leave a donation, that's fine. You can still eat. If you are able to leave a donation and you don't want to do one, that's fine too. You can still eat. Lunch is for everyone who is here on today, but I just wanted you all to be aware of this. Caregivers Connect and our grief ministry will be meeting today at 3 p.m. here at the church. And also today at 6 o'clock, uh, there is going to be a chamber music recital here in the sanctuary put on by Daria Keslova and Yulia Petkovich. Now, Daria was our pianist for a little while, while we were, before we were able to be blessed with Maria. So she is coming back as a part of the program with SMU, I believe, to help do this, I mean, with TCU, to help do this on this evening. So if you are available and you would like to come and hear some amazing music, we hope that you will do so today at 6 p.m. My friends, it is now time, as you all have guessed and may be aware, for the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church's Angel Tree. Yes, it is now time for the Angel Tree. This is sponsored by our committee on um, missions and outreach. Now, the tree is located right off of Shelton Hall on the bulletin board there in the hallway, and there will be many children's names that will be there over the course of the next few weeks. You are invited to adopt one or more of the children, and we're asking that you would bring the gifts for them on Monday through Wednesday of each week leading up to December 15th. That's a Friday, which will be the last day that you'll be able to bring gifts for the children. And for those of you worshiping with us online, if you want to participate, all we're asking is that you would contact the church office. Someone will be in touch with you shortly thereafter to let you know how you can participate as well. There will be more information about this as we, of course, move on into next month. As I mentioned on last Sunday, uh, Engage is a ministry of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church that we are now working with to help us understand who we are as a congregation, as a church, so that we can move forward and do better in what we're doing as being, as being a church. Well, one of the first steps in working with this is a church assessment survey. Now, in the narthex, on the table, the table in the middle, there is a QR code as well as a code for our church underneath it. 
If you've got time on today, go ahead, scan that code, and begin taking the survey. If QR codes are a little challenging for you, and sometimes they can be, within the next couple of weeks, there will be a link for the survey that will be a part of the eBlast, so you can get it that way. It's very important uh, to us that as many of you as possible, many members of the church as possible, take the survey to get the information to engage as they need when they are beginning to, to work with us. So please, my friends, make sure that you take the survey as soon as you possibly can. The offices and the CDC will be closed for Thanksgiving and the Friday after. This week, I will actually take the rest of my vacation time. So I will be out of pocket this week, but I won't be gone through a Sunday. I'm, I'm here today, you'll see me again on next Sunday. It's just the days in between that you may not be able to catch me. But nevertheless, uh, we are, are, are looking forward to as we move towards Advent. Okay, only two birthdays for this week that I have, only two. And those are Paul Cundy. Am I right, Paul? You got a birthday this week? They tell you you got a birthday this week. Okay, I, I think that means yes. <laughs> and Bill Miller, you have a birthday this week as well? Did they tell you that too? You do. All right, so happy birthday, Paul. Happy birthday, Bill. And as always, if we have missed your birthday for this week, please let me know, and then we will... Uh, share that information on next Sunday. All right, my friends, let's worship God. Parent talks about using the QR code. I've been in so many restaurants that I couldn't use one that they've all gone back to giving paper menus now. So I wish you luck. Please join me in the call to worship and stand. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come unto God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we belong to the Lord. Enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. And God's faithfulness to all generations. And if you would please turn in your hymnals to 643. We'll sing, Now Thank We All Our God.
creator of earth, we give you thanks for all that we have. We are thankful for the beautiful earth you have given to us that provides for us. We thank you. We thank you for the blue sky and white clouds, deep rich earth, and clear water. We thank you for the bold colors of leaves in autumn and night sky in winter dotted with stars. We thank you for the snow and ice and frost and that it lasts only for its season. For in all seasons, there is great beauty from you. We give you thanks and praise for the turning of the seasons that we may hold on and let go and see how you are making all things new. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. King David said to God, Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. We too have sinned, and God is justified in judging us. Confession keeps us right in fellowship with the Lord. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty Creator, we confess that we have not lived into your final instruction to care for the earth as you have cared for us. We have failed to live in a creation. We confess our sins. We have turned to the ways of the Lord and not to your ways as passed down from our ancestors of faith. We have turned to worldly measures of success through wealthy possessions and notoriety instead of living as you first entired the earth is bountiful and Forgive us of our sins. Call us into accountability for our own use of resources, but collectively may we hold our elected officials accountable that not be swayed by wealth and power of corporations, that they do not care for your earth. Hold us to your intention for us to care for the earth as a precious gift that when we give our thanks, amen. Now let us pray in silence. Amen. Our God is the God of a new beginning. There is always a new day, a new week, a new month, and a new season. There is always time to start doing the right thing. Repent, turn back to God's ways, and live into the promise of God, for God loves you so much. Go and do the right thing by practicing justice, kindness, and humility. Amen. Please rise.
May you have hope in Jesus Christ. You are now invited to pass the hope of Christ to each other. My friends, as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer on today, it's cliche, but it's true. And there is one aspect that I'm going to ask that you would keep in your hearts and in your minds on today. And that is those individuals who, at this time of year, struggle struggle with with believing that there's anything to be thankful for. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this worshiping experience, we, as the Bible says, should give thanks in all things. And we understand this. We know this. But my sisters and brothers, there are many in this existence who disagree with that. Some vehemently disagree with that. And I would like for us to keep them in our hearts and in our minds today as we go to the Lord in prayer. Our preparatory hymn is, To You, O Lord, We Lift Our Eyes, and we're singing the first verse. As we're singing this on today, for those of you who would like to stand for this prayer, you're welcome to do so. If you would like to come and gather at the altar, you're welcome to do this as well, or you can remain seated, that's fine. But let's get ready to talk to the Lord. Lord, our Lord, how excellent 
is your name in all the earth. We thank you today, O Lord, for your love, for your patience, your patience with us. As we make our way through this existence, many of us as best as we can, some of us haphazardly, O oh Lord. But you're so kind, so gracious, that you're willing to wait us out. And for this we say thank you. As we come to you today, we ask your blessings upon your children. All of us, Lord, stand in need of a blessing from you. Stand in need of a touch from you. But we do come today, as you have instructed us to be as intercessors, for those who believe they have no reason to be thankful at all. For this is a difficult world that we live in, O oh Lord. Wars that are taking place that we don't understand. Crime and hate that we don't understand. Devastation on so many levels, O oh Lord. And for these reasons and others, some of your children don't believe that there's anything to be thankful for. So we ask on today that you would hug them even tighter today. Bring them closer to you. Because you gave your son who died for all of us and that is reason enough to be thankful. To be thankful. So help us to share this truth. And for those who think that there's no reason to have gratitude in their hearts, help them to know you better and to see you in everything and everywhere. Now, Lord, we ask your blessings upon this church all that we're trying to do, pleasing in your sight, all that you've called us to do, the challenges even that have been placed in front of us. We know you will help us to rise up and meet them. Just give us the strength and the resolve to do so, O oh Lord. We pray for every church that is open today because of you and by you. And we ask your blessings upon this country, but not only the United States of America, every nation in this world that you have created. And please bless all of our political leaders. As always, touching their hearts and their minds so that they will seek you before making decisions that affect us all, before making decisions that we all must live with. Please continue to keep our women and men in uniform safe. And for those who are away from their families, keep their families encouraged and comforted. Now hear our prayers and grant our request. For we ask it all in your precious name. Amen and amen. 
You may be seated, my friends. Chris Burton once said that he always cringed when I went off script. Well, Chris, it's time to cringe. I'd like to do something that would put the Bible check in perspective. Thank you. Now, that's funny, but reading the Bible is serious. And I meant to use that to make a serious point. And that is, the Bible says something to each of us differently. We have to make up our own minds what it is saying. And that's why we have the Bible check. We want you to study and read your Bible. All parts of it. So please, read along and listen, but don't listen to me. Listen to what this verse is telling you. It's from Psalms 123. I lift up my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven. As the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us for what we have endured no end of contempt. Please have endured, no, we have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant of contempt from the proud.
My friends, our second text for today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the first 11 verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the first 11 verses. And we will allow the Bible check to have been done, where we saw earlier a little while ago. And, and please note that I did know that that was going to happen. I was aware. I was aware. I was aware that was going to happen. I thought the cartoon was cute. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Please, my friends, listen and read along. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings and all that you have done and for this great opportunity, this great opportunity to be in worship to you. We say thank you for all that we've witnessed. We say thank you for we know that you're using these things to continue to enable us to hear from you. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts, and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we just want to be better than the way we were before. In your name we ask it all. Amen and amen. If you would, please turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me, friend. Today's sermon is called, Stay Alert. Amen. Stay Alert. Um, do you all recognize this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a long, long time ago, in a land far, far away, called the United States of America, <laughs> This was a necessary, we believed a necessary device. It was called, or it is called, the club. And we use this, yes, that's right, on our steering wheels in our cars to keep them not from being broken into, but being driven away. That's what this was used for, because once you put it on your steering wheel and you locked it, your window could still be broken. Somebody could still get in car, but when they tried to drive off, they couldn't turn. This was used as a turret when it came to uh, keeping our cars safe. Used back in the, the late 80s, I guess, and in the, in the 90s, back when our cars did not have anti-theft systems in them. I know, I know. Uh, many of you right now, yeah, you, you grew up with cars with alarms. Many of us did not have 
<laughs> cars with alarms to them. It just didn't work out that way. But we used this as a way of trying to keep our cars safe. You know, we have always been concerned with being safe and secure, and rightfully so. We've got elaborate home security systems and uh, antivirus software, rather, and we've got protection against identity theft. And yes, today, you can't buy a car without some kind of a security system being a part of it, and our phones now have apps that alert us that when something is going wrong at home or with your car or anywhere else. After 9-11, President George W. Bush created a new cabinet position, Secretary of Homeland Security. We were and we are so much aware of terrorist acts now And I remember President Bush answered a question about whether or not we were doing too much. And this is what he said. He said, they, the terrorists, only have to get it right once. We have to get it right every time. And don't we feel that way about what we love, about what we want to keep secure and safe? So the car alarm stays on. House alarm must always be active. Some of us, some of us can't leave home without a little protection that we take with us. Why is this? Because we don't want to be caught off guard. We don't want to be caught off guard. Well, it's interesting to me with this heightened sense of security that we possess. I find it interesting that Jesus' return would be illustrated as a thief in the night. A thief in the night. You see, my friends, 1 Thessalonians is probably the oldest letter of Paul's that we have in our possession. It may actually be the first letter that he wrote and distributed. That is debatable. But as far as our Bible, our canon is concerned, yeah, it's the oldest piece that Paul wrote. And if you read it, if you read it, the verses in this epistle, if you read some of his later works, which I enjoy being able to do, you can see Paul's growth as an apostle as a servant of the Lord. You can can see how he adapts and changes some of his theological perspectives as he gets older. When you look at some of his other writings compared to 1 Thessalonians. You see, this letter was written to Gentile Christians who had no Judaic foundation. During the great diaspora when the Jews were scattered across The known globe, Thessalonica, was not a place where many of them landed. Not many. So when Paul shows up, everything that they learned about Christianity was taught to them by Paul primarily, but also by Silas and some by Timothy. And Paul is assuring them that the day of the Lord will occur. Although not seen or felt, The perusia, the second coming of the Lord, was promised by Jesus, and it needs to be accepted by us no matter how long it takes. Our faith, my friends, must kick in so that we can keep a strong resolve in these last days in which we exist. And please don't get it twisted. We are living in the last days. Now, I say that not necessarily because there are a lot of wars going on, not necessarily because there are a lot of of, of natural disasters taking place, not necessarily because there are a whole bunch of people popping up calling themselves Jesus. I say this, that we're living in the last days because the last days actually began the day Jesus went back home. 
When Jesus returned to glory, that's when the last days began. So we are living in the last days. The Old Testament, the Hebrew text, would oftentimes say that the day of the Lord was dreadful and no one would be able to stand. But Paul uses this imagery to point to one group who will be able to stand, those who are alert, those who stay alert and remain ready. You know, as a young man, my late teens and my early 20s, I used to love to hang out at night. Loved it. Loved being out at night. Loved staying out as long as I could at night. All the fun stuff seemingly happened at night. Used to love going to IHOP about two or three in the morning to see all the night folks come out. And they would come out and go to IHOP. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, there was a, a, a hip-hop group from when I was a kid called Houdini. Houdini had a song called The Freaks Come Out at Night. And if I may add, they all go to IHOP. <laughs> Two, three in the... In the morning, I used to love being out at night. You see, the night, my friends, the night gives a false sense of security for those who want to get into stuff, for those who want to get into things. The darkness seemed to provide a hideaway for wrongdoing for those who are unaware. The text says today, for, the, for those who sleep, they sleep at night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. The night or the darkness is a, is, is a metaphor. The concern for those who live life without a sense of connection to Christ. There's a sense of living life here with reckless abandon. Those who live this way are highly susceptible to being unprepared to not being ready for when Jesus returns. And this is what the text is speaking of. Those of us who are and know that we are, who are connected to Christ, we need not be worried about the Lord's return. If you live every day as if it is the day Jesus is coming back, you're always alert. You're always ready. You never have to worry about getting it wrong because you'll be right and ready all of the time. I've shared this with you before about St. Francis of Assisi, who was working in his garden, and someone stopped him and asked, what would you do if Jesus were to return today? And St. Francis stopped and looked at his garden, looked back at the person who asked the question, and said, I keep working in my garden. I would keep working in my garden because he was so ready that he didn't feel compelled to change anything. Anything. My mother had a cousin named Bernice. Bernice lived in, in Hueytown, Alabama, right outside of Huntsville. Alabama. And Bernice was an immaculate cleaner. Her house was always pristine, perfect. Floors always mop, carpet always vacuum. You couldn't find dust anywhere. Anywhere. I asked my old man once about that. I said, why is Cousin Bernice's house always perfect like that? He said, because she's always expecting company. So she keeps her house ready to entertain. So she's not caught off guard. 
You see, we live our lives expecting Jesus Christ's unexpected return. And that statement shouldn't sound weird to any of you. Shouldn't sound weird at all. In speaking about pop, you know, yesterday, was you would not know, but let me share with you. <laughs> yesterday would have been my parents' 62nd wedding anniversary. Yesterday. And as I was getting ready for today, and I was thinking about, I went, went and got the club and all this kind of stuff, I was thinking about uh, my old man. And my old man was uh, obsessed, if you will, with keeping the family safe and secure. I am too, to a degree, but I don't think I'm as bad as he was. But absolutely obsessed with keeping the family safe and secure. So back in that same time when the club was used with cars, people would come through the neighborhood and they would sell burglar bars for your house, put burglar bars on your house. As Soon as they came to our neighborhood, my old man grabbed them. Bars on the house. My mother said, uh, what if there's a fire? How are we going to get out? My old man said, I'm strong. <laughs> what did he say? I'll push the bars off and we'll get out. Uh, okay, Pop, I don't know about that one. But nevertheless, put burglar bars on the house. One day he came home with a little bell, smaller than the ones that the Salvation Army used, a little bell. ding a ling 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 He was proud of that bell. He went to the kitchen and got the twisty ties that you would put on, on packages of bread, wrapped it around the bell, got a safety pin, and clipped it to, <laughs> my wife's laughing because you saw it, clipped it to a curtain <laughs> that was in front of the sliding glass door. My father said, now if somebody breaks in, the bell will ring, and we'll know somebody's coming in the house. I said, Pop, <laughs> get this straight. So if somebody's going to break in the house, you're not going to hear them tearing up the burglar bars on the window. That's not going to get you. You're not going to hear the glass breaking as they come through. That's not going to get you. What's going to bring you to alert is the bell going ding-a-ling-a-ling as they come through the curtain. That's what's going to do it. And my old man looked at me and he thought and he said, it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> the text says, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Even though my father put up all of these things to try to keep the family safe, which I believe he was supposed to do. He and my mother were supposed to do. That did not stop either one of them from leaving this place. You see, we all, all, we're going to be called home at some point or another. What we're learning with the text for today is that you need to be ready when the call comes. You need to be alert and be prepared when the call comes. You see, I'm confident today that my parents are with the Lord. I am. And there is no greater security and safety than being with Jesus. Oh, hello, somebody. And I'm not just talking about in paradise. I'm talking about right here, right now. Right here, right now. Being with the Lord. And if we are with the Lord, we ought not get caught off guard. 
when Jesus returns. We shouldn't get caught scampering and scrambling when the Lord returns because we know the truth, which is he is coming back. He is coming back. So be comforted with this and stay alert. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10 state, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will be brimming with new wine. Let us give our tithes and offerings to God. Please join me in saying what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead, 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, my friends. There may be someone who has joined us on today, and we're glad that you're here. But you come in today without Jesus Christ being in control of your life. Well, this invitation is for you to make the best decision you can make in this existence, and that is to have Jesus Christ as your Savior. This invitation is for you. Perhaps there's someone here today and you'd like to be a member of this church, the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. We'd be more than happy to have you as a member here. This invitation is for you. Perhaps you are a member here, or, or maybe you're a member somewhere else, but you've gotten off track. You're not living your life for the Lord like you know that you should. Well, this invitation is for you to simply start over again, to begin again. And there's no need to be embarrassed about that or ashamed about that. Many of us in this room have done it. Many of us online, I've done it time and time again. It's a sign of how gracious our God is. Or perhaps special prayers, which you need. That's fine as well. And in just a few moments, as the choir blesses us and leads us in singing our closing hymn, if you're here today, I would invite you to come down and join me and join Elder Tammy Mackesy, our service elder for this month. But if coming down is a little bit too much, then please do me this favor. And for those of you joining us online, this goes for you as well. Reach out to us this week. Now, yes, I'll be on vacation, but you can still send me an email if you like to. And let's find out, let's, let's get a chance to talk and meet up and find out where you are in your walk with Christ. For be it that day or today, we always want to make sure that it is the day that we get things right between you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. Our last hymn for the day is number 176. 176. Um, I'm going to coach you through this one, so go ahead and let's stand. If you, that requires laughing. Um, if you read music, you're probably going cross-eyed looking at all these repeats. I will say we'll do the first page twice, the entire page twice, and then we'll go to the second page. We'll do it four times. By that time, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. So, from the top. If you only had faith, just like a little seed of mustard. This is what Jesus has said. If you only had faith, just like a little seed of mustard. This is what Jesus has said. You would be able.
I tell you what, I was, yeah, I was just getting into it. <laughs> All right, my friends, um, please do not forget after this worship experience, and I'm going to say a prayer instead of just giving the benediction, which will be over the food so you can go in and begin eating. Also, no youth work on this evening. Uh, we will find out when the youth will be getting back together. And again, thank you, Leanne. We love you. We do. Now, here's the charge. Stay alert. Okay? Stay alert. Live your life to the glory of God every day. Every day. That's how you stay alert. Please join me in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done on today. We do ask your blessings upon Leanne as she begins an amazing new work at Canyon Creek and know, allow her to know that we love her and we will definitely miss her. Now, Lord, please bless the food that we're going to receive, that it will nourish us and give us strength enough to continue to serve you. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on today. Thank you for joining us online.